You are watching Endeavor TV with the MSI Wind U160 netbook, which has a 10.1 inch screen, 2 gigs of RAM, and a 160GB hard drive, Atom N450 processor. And we are going to do some multimedia testing today. As you can see, I have a few HD videos, some 5 megapixel pictures, standard DivX, Photoshop, CS 1.6, some music, but first we will start by playing the A-Team um, HD trailer in 360p, so standard resolution. As you can see, YouTube in standard resolution plays fine. This sound fits the video. Let me turn up the sound a little bit to half. And yeah, let's just try out 720p. As you can see, doesn't play that well anymore. Could be better, and of course, if we turn that up to 1080p, it's not going to be better. It's almost going to be unwatchable. Let me buffer a bit and let's play it. So, 1080p, not really the best to watch without Nvidia Ion or the Broadcom HD chip. So you should get one of those devices if you want to enjoy HD movies. Now let's go to a standard website like the New York Times to see how um, standard browsing is on a 10 inch screen as you can uh, see here on the screen. Pretty watchable. I have an also an outdoor video so you can see how the um, this glossy screen behaves outdoors when the sun is shining and when it's not but yeah that's pretty usable so let's close this and continue with this 720p video big bug bunny you can download that also to test on your device i'm using the media player classic home cinema edition because this has um this uses actually the graphics card to play video not only the cpu and yeah 720p Sound and picture fits perfectly. So yeah, you can watch 720p on this little fella. That's no problem. 1080p is another story though. The picture looks smoother, of course, uh, than on the YouTube channel, but... Um, yeah. Not as great to watch a full-length movie. And the sound of course doesn't fit the video. You will see it when he crashes into the bush. I mean, you were able to hear it before it happened, so yeah. That's not the best. It's the same with all the other netbooks though. Um, only if they have an iron or Broadcom chip, as I said. It's better, let's check out some standard DivX, which shouldn't be a problem, of course. <clears throat> um, so, this is a Scrubs episode. Looks fine, doesn't it? Um, so, this would be the regular colors. My camera was a little bit too low. And if you go to the left or right, you will see. Maybe from the other side you see it better. Um, yeah, the colors change a little bit. From the top it's going to be brighter. And from the bottom it's a little bit darker as you were able to see till now. Let me adjust the screen so you can see better. And let's go on with pictures. 5 megapixel. This is just for demonstrating how fast you can browse through. So I'm going to hit next. Next, next, and next, and yeah, works pretty good, don't have to wait that long, it's not faster on a big desktop, and now let's check out Photoshop, this should give you an idea how fast it is with 2 gigs of RAM, DDR2, Sodem, um, should be the same for all the other netbooks. So let's just cut out a piece of this picture. Oops, wrong button. So I'm usually just cutting out something and moving it around so you can 
see how fast it works. See, and this is not much better than with one gig, so didn't help with that. Drawing around in the picture is always the same, it's yeah, no problem for the device. What changed a lot from the uh, 1 gig to 2 gig if you smudge the picture for example the processor doesn't have to work that hard it's not calculating so long so that's an improvement so if you just work on smaller parts of the picture the 2 gigs help, help a lot but if I cut out a big piece or work with a big piece and turn it around or something let's do that then Yes, you see I just pressed Ctrl T to transform and it's thinking and thinking and thinking it actually it shouldn't do that. Maybe I did something wrong. Yeah, now it says not responding. Hmm, that's interesting. Let's do that again. Okay, now it works. So, yeah. As you can see, that works pretty good. With one gig that wouldn't be that Great, so last test is Counter-Strike as always and while that loads I show you around the device. Um, great chiclet keyboard, what I don't really like is the uh, single touch touchpad, there is no scrolling on here. Um, the the um, mouse buttons are fine but I always hit accidentally the mouse also so it jumps around a lot. The ports are standard. Um, USB port, then wireless on and off, VGA, power in, a fan, which is pretty loud. Maybe you can hear it. And then we have Kensington, the fan is always almost uh, almost always on. Some status LEDs, and on the other side there is just a standard multi-card reader, um, which actually doesn't say which cards, I only tested SD cards. Microphone, headphone, two USBs, and a network plug. And on the end, there is the power port. And why we are already going around the device, which is pretty neat feature by the MSI. The logo here is glowing at the U160, but only if the device is on, of course. And yeah, let's go on with the Counter Strike test. So. Start a new game. This resolution is 640 by 480. Let's do eight players and start walking around shooting people. Of course, this is only virtually. And yeah, I'm using an external mouse. I don't care actually who I play with. So, and I'm not a really good player reader because I just don't have time to play. So, let's start walking works fine but it could be faster for some reason I think the MSI U160 is a little bit slower with this game and I don't know why oops and I'm still not dead now that's a miracle I think that's a little bit too loud for you so let's turn that down a bit this was the MSI U160 I'm Balash Gal by, uh, from Endeavor TV Check out more videos on Endeavor the, uh, TV, the YouTube stream or channel, and Endeavor.com, which is actually a German site, but I have a lot of infos about tablets, gadgets, netbooks, nettops, MIDs, and so on. Thanks for watching.